Today it's a 3JS tutorial, kind of for beginners, painting with decals. We'll cover using the GLTF loader, as well as a texture loader to load up our assets. And we'll also explore uh, the use of the Raycaster to interact with the objects in the scene using a mouse. And of course, the decal geometry, which creates this really cool effect. Looks like you're painting right on top of the model. Before I get into that, I want to talk about memberships. I now offer channel memberships. If you join, you can support me and my channel, and you can get cool perks, like early access to videos, as well as members-only videos. So check them out. All right, so we got a model loaded up, and I can paint on it using decals. And I think it's a really cool effect. So let's explore how to create this. On the 3JS website, under examples, if you type in decals, there's a very cool demo with Lee Perry Smith. And you can shoot at him. This is based on that, only I've modified it. So I'm loading a different model and I'm painting with um, what are like strokes. How are we doing this? The process works like this. Start with the template, clear it out. Then you can load your model, in this case, a bunny. And then you'll set up kind of a, a basic decal. Um, you're going to load textures and um, then you're going to add a ray caster. Ray caster is a simple way to interact with objects in a 3D scene. It's not as complicated as it sounds. I mean, to me, it sounds like ray marching or ray tracing. It's not like that. Yeah. And then we set up some mouse listeners to interact with our mouse. We could also set this up to work with um, gestures or hand tracking. I think that would be cool. First things first. Starting from our basic template. Let's clear out this cube, this geometry. We don't need it. And clear this background layer as well. We don't need that. And instead, we want to import the decal. I think it's called decal geometry. From decal geometry. What else do I need? Oh, yeah. Import the GLTF, yeah, that one, GLTF loader. Um, a texture loader. No, that's not, I don't want that. Okay. Um, the set of the scene and the controls, some lighting, comma, three, make it a little bit brighter. Whoops. Uh, what's happening? Cube is not defined. No, it is not. Um, let's try this new pattern of the set animation loop. Let's get rid of this. And we'll just up here say renderer. Uh, set animation loop. Animate. And uh, is there a problem? No problem. There's just nothing in the scene. Let's put something in the scene using that GLTF loader. Let's instantiate that below the lights here. Uh, const uh, GLTF loader equals a new GLTF loader. And then we'll load. Hang on. I, I want to do load async. Let's say const GLTF equals uh, GLTF loader load async, but I don't want this path. Inside the repo for this project, You'll find um, source. That's not it. Uh, bunny. Dot glb. And then we'll say model is equal to glf. Dot scene. Scene. Dot add model. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, hey, there's our bunny. Ooh, hi, bunny. I want to modify that bunny's material. I'm going to give it uh, just a flat material be to, to act as like the 
background, the basis. So const uh, model mat. I don't like that term at all. Let's just call it mat. It's equal to a new three dot mesh basic material. And it's it's not really going to be white. I mean, it's definitely not going to be wireframe. Uh, or red. Oh yeah, let's let's say. Um, instead of model, let's call that mesh. I think that's more clear. And then here we'll say mesh dot material equals mat. Uh, just got stale that set. Of course, I like set scalar to. Okay, I'm not seeing this though. Children. Children zero. There we go. That's actually really cool too, isn't it? All right, but I want this to be just like a kind of a gray color. You can adjust that gray for your taste. I think for the screen recording, I'm going to need it to be a little bit lighter than I normally would set it to be. Great, we've loaded our model. Let's load. Uh, let's do the decal stuff. So, const text loader is equal to a new three dot texture loader, and then we're going to load. Let's see, a const decals. No, no. Um, strokes equals an array, and inside of here. We're just going to have text loader dot load. So textures S1, S2, 3, and one more S4. Thank you. Um, any errors? Yeah, not found. Those things were not found. That's because src slash like that. I think they're found now. Those are our strokes. Um, decal mat is a mesh basic material. Actually, I want it to be a mesh um, Lambert material. Um, let's define this decal mat is just a mesh Lambert material. And I'm going to say that it's transparent. It also, I'm going to test for depth. I'm going to write, I'm not going to write to depth. There's this polygon offset parameter. I don't know what it does. And then I'm going to set the factor to negative four. To define the, the decals, I'm going to create a new array. It's an empty array that'll hold all the decals. I want to define a, pos a position, an orientation, and a size. This will be used to kind of change the, the each, kind of randomly alter each decal. Now I want to create a function to add the decal. I'm calling it add stroke. And inside it, I'm going to just make a copy of that material, assign a random brush those textures I, I, sh I loaded earlier. I don't show those though. Okay, just to quickly show the strokes. Here's one, another, another, another. I created these using, what's the name of that? Procreate on the iPad. And I just exported these simple strokes. So I'm just going to grab one of those and apply it as a map to this cloned material and randomly set a color for that material. Next, let's copy the point. Intersection is not defined yet. You'll see what that means. That's the point where my mouse is on the model. This is the rotation. Um, it's set from the mouse helper, which I haven't defined yet, but stay tuned. And then kind of randomly rotate it on the z-axis. Now scale it randomly too with a min and max scale 
and set the scale. Um, lastly, create the decal geometry. Um, this, this line is interesting. Um, it's required to keep the decals from flickering, as you'll see in a second. Now, push the decals into that array and attach it to the mesh. Um, I just want to clean this thing up here. So we've got this add stroke method, but we're not calling it. Let's set up a couple of listeners. We've got this resize listener. Let's also add another. We're just going to add this key down listener and inside of there say, hey, if the key is a space, then do this thing. Let's toggle the visibility of our mesh. And that just doesn't work. Is that because, why is that exactly? Material.opacity. Maybe I need to say transparent is true. I think that's what I need to do. Yeah, now I can toggle the visibility of that. Great. Right below our add stroke method, let's add this raycaster. I'm adding a mouse helper so we can kind of see where exactly um, the cursor is. I mean, I can kind of see where the cursor is because I can see the cursor. But let's add this because it's going to be useful for placing our decals. So I'm just defining a cone geometry and I'm rotating the geometry before creating this mouse helper, uh, which is just a mesh. And adding it to the scene. Okay, a couple more data structures to help us with our raycasting. Let's define this intersection object. Also, let's add this uh, 2D mouse pause vector. Uh, is pointer down boolean, which we'll, we'll see why that's handy in a second, and this intersects. Let's add another event listener. This one for every time you click the mouse or touch. So pointer down, the event client x divided by the window width. So we're normalizing the coordinate. Next, we're going to handle the raycast, a, a function we'll write in a second. And if there is a, an intersection, we're going to turn off the orbit control so we can't move around the scene. We're going to add a stroke and set this Boolean to true. Let's also add um, a pointer up listener so that when you, you lift the mouse, we'll re-enable the orbit controls and set that Boolean to false. Another event listener, this time, if you move the mouse around the screen, let's add a listener for that pointer move. And we'll set the mouse position, same as before with the normalized device coordinates. Then we'll handle raycast, a function we'll write in a second, and then say, hey, oh, are you intersecting the object and the pointer is down? Then add a stroke. It's not working yet because I didn't add that handle raycast method. But let's let's add that. That is my mouse helper. The final piece of the puzzle for this project, this handle recast method. We're gonna set from camera, passing in that mouse, the position of the mouse and our camera, and then we're gonna say intersects object. So we want to check if our mouse is inter or our ray, excuse me, is intersecting the mesh. And um, I don't know what this. Uh, let's see. Do we get anything to help us with this? Hang on. Oh, recursive. So is it recursive? No. And this is the, this is the array that's going to hold the intersection data. <clears throat> if there's anything, if there are any objects that were intersected, let's push them to this array. If there's anything in there, then grab that po this point. That's going to be a position in space, a 3D position. Move the mouse helper to that position. Uh, copy that value into our intersection object. Now, um, this is sort of, I thought this might be unnecessary and I wanted to remove it from the exam. This code is obviously based on the example. I hope that's obvious. I wanted to remove this, but I, I it turns out it's necessary for the decal placement. So what does this do? I'm copying the normal matrix of the mesh apparently, or I'm getting the normal matrix. And then I'm cloning it for, 
let's see what else is what else is happening. I'm gonna apply a normal matrix. I, I don't know what this does. Multiply that by a scalar, add it to the point, and then tell the mouse to look at that point. Um, then I'm gonna say, hey, we're intersecting, that value that Boolean value is true, and set this empty that array again. Right, if we're not intersecting anything, then just set that to false. Let's save that. Now our mouse helper is working great. See how it's kind of hovering over our object? Hang on, is there any errors? Oh yeah, enable orbit controls. It's not defined because I never defined it. Right below our controls, let's add this function to just toggle this, you know, or we'll, we'll pass in a Boolean value. Should be is enabled like that. I think it makes it more clear. Thank you. Now, decal material is not defined. Well, well, well. Now it is. Oh, brushes. Because I call them strokes. Let's call them brushes. Woo! And I can toggle the opacity of my model so it looks like we're just painting in space. Okay, that's pretty successful. Let's and still let's try a different model. How about um hand done? I move this down. Okay, that's not as successful. Um I think I have to um yeah, that let's center it. Well, I think the brushes are a little big. I would make them a little bit smaller. And we could do that with a min and max scale in this add stroke here. Oh, 0 0.5 and 1. About half is big now. Yeah, I like that better. I like that. I like more detail. Is this wild? Let's load a different model. A sorrow head. I just think this is a really cool effect. It gets close to a type of 3D rendering which is near and dear to my heart. Non-photorealistic rendering. Oh, love it. Pretty cool. I I think you I hope you like it. Um some variations you could do would be to control the color better. Um you could pick a color palette and pick randomly from those or have it uh have a hue shift as you move around or just or ha have an ability to modify the hue with with some control. Um what else? Try different models. You could try animated models and see how that looks. I don't know how decals will look on an animated model. Might look really cool. I really like the effect of the random colors though. If you like this video, leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see. Share this video with someone who you think might like it. As always, thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.